Hi everybody, it is March 8, 2020. I'm going to start this video playing a few minutes of this video, which I happen to think is very good. I will link to everything below, um, but as I've said from the beginning, we don't know what this is. We may never know what this is. This coronavirus, uh, what brought it about, has it been activated? by 5G? Um, are the symptoms caused by 5G? Is it a bioweapon? Or is it just that coronavirus that's a cold? Mm. And are we being played once again? So let me just play a few minutes of this. I, and it's very important to listen very carefully to what they're saying in terms of... Uh, really trying to figure out what is going on and understanding that while we may want to get to the truth of you know some things or specific things or events that are taking place we may not ever be able to get to it what we do know is that there is an agenda behind mainstream media propaganda. And that includes, actually, unfortunately, a lot of alternative news websites. So um, that's why, you know, I've just been kind of going with, all right, what's the agenda? What is the agenda? Because so much is happening. And unless you're an insider and know what the plan is. A whole lot is, the best we can do is just speculate. Put together uh, information, you know, come up with facts, uh, evidence, but unfortunately a lot of it is disparate. It's, it's just pieces here, there, uh, you put it together and you come up with a speculative conclusion. Okay, here we go. Yes, you have a video specifically on this that just came out talk, talking about this, the speculation around coronavirus and 5G. Of course, the link to that video will be in the show notes uh, where you do elaborate on all of the things that you just went through there. I think it's also important to underline, yes, uh, we are in an information-deprived environment. We do not know all the details, so speculation is going to be necessary to some extent. We have to formulate hypotheses to try to get a grasp on what's going, uh, what's going on, but they're hypotheses and we have to understand them as such. Therefore, we have to look at the facts and see if they line up with the hypothesis. We, we have to try to put forward uh, predictions and test the, what, what's going to happen based on our predictions that we're able to make using the model that we, we've constructed. And we have to stop from investing our identity and wedding our identity to these hypotheses that come along uh, so that you start defending it as if it's, oh, no, it has to be 5G or whatever it is. Of course, this is just one of the many examples of theories that have been put out. And I hope we can model an example of how to look at something like this rationally and critically. There are points in favor and points against this type of thing. So what do we do? So, for example, something that occurs to me as a result of this, you mentioned, for example, people who are taking a look at the maps and look, Wuhan is a place that was lead to spearheading with 5G implementation in China, and now it's coronavirus. Okay, you know, South Korea, uh, Singapore, other places that have been world leaders in this. But as you point out in your video, well, Houston prided itself on being the world's first 5G implementing city. We haven't seen a huge outbreak in Houston yet, so so why, why Wuhan and not Houston? Is there something that's being added to the 5G frequencies in Wuhan or some sort of combination what is that X factor and how do we look for that and what does that tell us about where future outbreaks might occur? How does this explain uh, the, the instances that are coming up in Oman and Croatia and Ecuador and Iceland and other places that are not particularly known for their 5G implementation? Uh, is, is there no relation there? How do, again, what does that tell us about what we can or cannot expect in other places in the future? Uh, on this particular cruise ship, as you go through in your uh, video, there's 
there's talk of, there was potentially some there's some sort of Wi-Fi system that was implemented there, but was it 5G related or, or is this a separate thing and why that one cruise ship but not other cruise ships? Uh, again, there's lots of different points that we can interrogate here. Uh, any, anything that comes to your mind in, in terms of how we actually get a, a, an actual grasp on this hypothesis and what it predicts or fails to predict? Well, uh, so as you said, this is somebody's or many people's hypothesis at the moment. Well, you got to test that, right? And, and the, just a couple of basic questions you asked there, I feel like are the, the quickest way there, okay? Well, you get a list of, uh, I've got lists of these I could send if somebody wants to look at You can look up the list of cities and countries that have had 5G. I've got a very helpful website I found that shows you the most current maps that is being updated weekly. Um, and so you could take that and overlay that with the coronavirus stuff if you want to so pursue that. Uh, but as you said, and I, I made sure to check this out again before we talked uh, this evening, uh, Houston prided itself on being the first 5G city in the world. Now maybe that's a stretch, maybe they weren't exactly the first, but they were definitely the first in the US and that was October 2018, right? So that was with Verizon and I looked it up again, a couple months later, AT&T launched their business-only uh, 5G in Houston. And then just last year in 2019, in the spring, Sprint launched their additional 5G. So, and then uh, the fall, T-Mobile. So now at the point where we are right now here in 2020, we have four different companies offering different levels and types of you know, uh, residential or ultra fast band, whatever they want to call it, 5G. And they've got different public centers around the city that are being blasted by this. So, I mean, that's four different companies, four different sets of infrastructure. They're not all sharing the same infrastructure. Some of them you know, are doing the millimeter wave, some are doing it differently. So we're, we're definitely pretty saturated in this at the moment. And it's not the complete blanketing like we're gonna see in the coming five years or so, maybe not as far as long as places like South Korea, but it's definitely prevalent here. And uh, other than maybe a couple days ago, Rice University here in Houston, there was a couple students who said they're gonna voluntarily quarantine because of a trip they made recently, but there's been no and we have the fourth largest city in the country, international airport, people flying in and out of Houston from all over the world. And thus far, we're having no um, major reports of outbreaks or cases or anything like that. So that's just you know my personal experience here in one city. Now, if somebody was really trying to test this theory, then I would suggest getting that list again of places that have been advertising. It's not hard to find that. Find the hotspots. Like for example, <clears throat> in the US right now, the, the outbreak of Seattle, they're saying, right? And then Los Angeles County and some of these places. Well, if you wanted to try to prove these things together, you would then go do the research on, uh, has 5G been installed there? And even if you do, look, okay, I got a match. That still doesn't prove the theory. It just means you can progress now to the next step of your testing your hypothesis. Because if, if you start off there, you can't even prove that 5G is existing in some of these places, which as you said, there are already reports of places um, that don't have 5G yet. Maybe they have Wi-Fi or different things. And when I put this forward to some uh, wise YouTube commenter, they said, oh, it's because um, they haven't turned it on yet, or how do you know that Houston really was first, or, you know, move the goalpost or whatever, like, um, to keep fitting the narrative. Well, again, you're right, yeah, we have to, because uh, clearly there's an X factor involved. It, clearly something happened in Wuhan, or uh, we're being told something happened in Wuhan. Okay, so, yeah, maybe they did something special in Wuhan, or maybe it's, it, as they, uh, maybe the 5G is activating something. That's a hypothesis. It could be the case, but we have to then I try to hone in on, okay, so what is that? X factor. And again, what does that tell us about what is going to happen from here? That's really the proof will be in the pudding when you come up with a model that actually predicts something in the real world and, and lines up with the data. That's the real holy grail, and I don't think we're there yet. Yeah, exactly. And and so I think that for anybody listening to this who has seen uh, Dana's video or any of the other videos, there's a bunch of them out there now floating around, and there's so much you could just you know, obsess about coronavirus and, and get all afraid if you want to. And uh, I'm guilty of letting it get to me a little bit the more I see popping up everywhere, right? I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can travel anymore. And uh, I think, though, if the, whatever theory you want to ascribe to, we should, for one, just probably just safely say the official story is not true. We can say that probably without you know too much doubt. Doesn't mean we know what the facts are. And uh, that's another thing uh, point I want to make for a moment is just that I think we need to get to a place where we're okay as individuals, as researchers, I know that I am personally, with just accepting that we don't know certain things and that we might never know. I, I've noticed in, in commenters and people online that that's something they're very averse to and they you, you want to, again, have that worldview that explains everything to you because it's scary to be like, oh, maybe we don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I'm going to die and never really know the full story. I'm never, nobody's going to tell me exactly what's going on, which we all 
you know, work towards trying to uncover the truth. But the fact is that in many of these cases, unless you're in China reporting or you've got, you know, on the ground sources, which some of us do have, and there's some pretty crazy things going on, but unless you can see and witness something firsthand and document it and go confirm, and you know, that's where I think the journalism comes in, actually trying to talk to experts and, you know, taking one piece of information and then going and confirming that another way. Um, but if you can't do that, then it's okay to just accept that you might not know the answer. It's okay, like, because there's a lot of theories and ideas that, you know, we could sit around and have a, you know, a conversation at the bar and, and, and I'll be like, yeah, you know, this is what I think is really going on. But I can't put my name on a documentary with that information or an article that says I know it's happening, but in private conversations or maybe even some videos I can kind of say, all right, guys, this is speculation here. This is what I think based on everything I've researched, what I feel like. And sometimes later those things are proven true. But I notice a lot where folks are kind of reacting to me with this uh, coronavirus speculation. They obviously haven't seen my documentary, but they're like, you can't, you don't understand that 5G is, you know, causing harm. It's like, I, I very obviously understand that, but that doesn't mean what you're saying is also true. I can see one thing without necessarily having to buy the whole thing wholesale. So I just want to put that out there that it's okay to be in a place where you recognize that you don't have all the facts. And, and that's, you, you're probably going to be more respected instead of going around and acting like you got it all figured out because, you know, none of us have it figured out. And that's just, just being real about yeah. it. Um, okay, <clears throat> so um, I agree with everything that was said, except for one point. Those maps, we don't even know if the telecom maps that are showing, okay, 5G's here and 5G's there, we don't even know if that's true. I went to Charter their store in Anderson, South Carolina. I've been getting comments from subscribers saying, you have 5G in Anderson, that's why you're feeling this way. No, there is no 5G in Anderson. But the charter store where I go to pay my internet bill had a huge banner on their storefront window. 5G is here. Now, I have not seen any change in the cell towers, any change in the cells on the cell towers, any 5G cells up here in Anderson. So I was a little surprised to see 5G is here. So I walked in and I asked one of the employees, I said, hmm, 5G is here? And she looked at me and she said, no, it's not. I said, well, you have that huge banner on that window. Why? She said, ask corporate. So we got into a conversation. She said, 5G is only in New York, California, and another state, and I cannot remember, probably, she might have said Texas for all I know. 5G is not here. So you, and I've posted on that map, the T-Mobile map. I've gotten people, oh, Mike Morales has, has posted that map, T-Mobile. Look, It's unfortunate that we are living a time when we get an awful lot of information from the industries that, you know, are um, putting out the products, but it's not correct, accurate information. So, the woman in the charter store said, 5G will not be in Anderson for a long time. All right, so they have these maps, and they claim that 5G is it. Maybe they're doing that to get everybody all uh, upset about 5G and protest you know, areas. And prior to them spending money you know, to roll it out, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But it's not in a lot of places that people think it is. So when there's talk about this is 5G causing the symptoms that they claim are the coronavirus, um, that doesn't make any sense, especially as they report uh, coronavirus outbreaks now in so many different countries, in so many different states here in the United States, where we don't have 5G. 
So what's happening? Well, we don't know. But I have said, just watch what's happening. You know, somebody also left me a comment saying they saw a Fox News show. I think a grand princess passenger who was diagnosed with the coronavirus was interviewed. And they said, it's like a cold. All right. We don't know what this is. But am I afraid that I'm going to get the coronavirus? No. I have said all along, I'm very concerned what governments and our government, U.S. government, will do. Because the pandemic has always been one of the scenarios that they would bring in this new world order. Well, we're marching uh, deeper and deeper into tyranny. I had a conversation with a subscriber today, and I had a conversation with her yesterday. So I said yesterday, you know, as they continue this 24-7 news cycle on coronavirus and the increasing numbers, and it's uh, rapidly, exponentially spreading, as they continue on this way, my hunch is that they would have a harder time rolling back if they wanted to pull back on this. Let's say, let's say that this is, uh, well, I don't want to say a game because that almost, you know, m makes it seem as if it's uh, a not a serious thing happening. It's a very serious thing happening because of the agenda behind it, but um, if what we are hearing is great exaggeration, or perhaps all of it not true, and they are, let's say, using frequencies to, you know, um, cause an awful lot of the symptoms that we are seeing in people in China, because I don't, I don't believe that all of those videos that we have seen coming out of China are um, fake. I do believe a lot of them are authentic. So we definitely have something going on. Um, can they use frequencies, electromagnetic frequencies? And it doesn't have to be 5G. It can be 4G to bring about the seizures, the twitching, the uh, and the symptoms of the coronavirus, which are three. Fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, shortness of breath. Well, the, that, those symptoms can be brought about by electromagnetic frequencies, but they can also be brought about by an awful lot of uh, illnesses. And so we don't know. But How how do they roll back on this? Well, the conversation I had today with her was, I want to, I want, I, because I thought about it. The condition, the condition certainly of the American people, that they're not getting much. They don't, nothing begs questions in a whole lot of people's minds. So I remember when I was posting videos on the hurricanes that were twirling about off the coast of Mexico in a place where you don't see the development of hurricanes. And they twirled about for five days. And I posted on it. I was like, okay, look at this, twirling about. Nothing is being said, and then boom, mainstream media is on it. Oh my God, we've got a hurricane, it's coming into Mexico, and then it's going to go through this desert and hit Arizona, and then it's going to continue on to Utah, and then mainstream media 
230 million Americans threatened by this hurricane that was literally going to just turn right and head off to the East Coast, affecting everybody in its path. A hurricane. A hurricane? Well, generally a hurricane, you know, uh, it hits land and that hit uh, tempers the hurricane and it becomes a mm, tropical storm and then it peters out. It does not go through deserts into Arizona, then on up to Utah, and then threaten 230 million Americans. Well, that was reported on mainstream media, and I posted on it, and guess what? The next day, nothing. It was like, okay, I heard that. I know I heard it. I even posted on it. There, okay, mainstream media. The next day, it was like it never happened. Could they have this coronavirus? Everybody, oh my God, stocking up on toilet paper. And then the next day, okay, Peter's out. Yeah, they could. They could, actually. And it won't phase most people. All right, so I don't see it. It's not petering out. It continues to march towards tyranny. Maybe they're looking for a response from people to see what they will do. Here, why this draconian response to the coronavirus? Okay, so they now have canceled South by Southwest, one of the most important events in the world in Austin, Texas, which has thus far not reported a single case of coronavirus. So, based on last year's number, it's the end for 73,716 conference attendees and 232,258 festival attendees, 4,700 speakers, 4,331 media press attendees, 2,124 sessions, 70,000 trade show attendees occupying 181,400 square feet of exhibit space, space, 351 official parties and events, 612 international acts, 1,964 perfor performance acts. Wow. Local merchants devastated. All hotel and flight reservations lost. Financial calamity for the city. Last year, it brought a half a billion dollars for local merchants and for untold millions of people affected by the abrupt decision. A petition on change.org signed by 55,000 people who demanded the cancellation and government listened? Government actually responded to a petition? Do you hear agenda? I do. Did 55,000 people sign a petition to cancel this? I don't believe that that's true. Can I state definitively that that petition was actually conjured up um, you know, deliberately, and then the city acquiesced. Like, okay, this is a deliberate move to actually destroy an, a lot of people, you know, financially. Uh, can't state it definitively, but based on what we have been seeing throughout the years how our government works, how the quote-unquote elite you know, get to destroy more and more Americans in every which way. Well, that's my thinking. So, um, yeah, it's, listen to this. Psychology Today uh, points out that your doctor is not panicking. 
COVID-19 is a new virus in a well-known class of viruses. The coronaviruses are cold viruses. I've treated countless patients with coronaviruses over the years. In fact, we've been able to test for them on our respiratory panels for the entirety of my career. And this is a doctor. Um, for almost all of us, they run their course without medication. And in the vulnerable, they can trigger a more severe illness like asthma or pneumonia. This virus is different and worse than other coronaviruses, but it still looks very familiar. We know more about it than we don't know. And, well, again, the flu is killing more people, hospitalizing more people. Uh, many more are contracting flu. That's according to the CDC than the coronavirus. So why the hype about this? New England Journal of Medicine reports as follows. On the basis of a case definition requiring a diagnosis of pneumonia, the currently reported case fatality rate is approximately 2%. In another article in the journal, uh, they report the mortality rate of 1.4% among 1,099 patients with laboratory confirmed COVID-19. These patients had a wide spectrum of disease severity. If one assumes that the number of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic cases is several times as high as the number of reported cases, the case fatality rate may be considerably less than 1%. This suggests that the overall clinical consequences of COVID-19 may ultimately be more akin to those of a severe seasonal influenza, which has a case fatality rate of approximately 0.1%, or a pandemic influenza, similar to those in 57 and 1968, rather than a disease similar to SARS and MERS, which have had case fatality rates of 9 to 10 percent and 36 percent, respectively. Okay, so New England Journal of Medicine is coming out and saying this is not a big deal. Now, of course, it's a big deal for someone who has comorbidities, who, who has chronic illness, um, but We've already heard from an awful lot of people, and it's been reported that, what is it? Well, well I, I can't remember the percentage, but a huge percentage of people get this and recover fine. So why are we freaking out? Because they're using this as an agenda. That's why. All right. Um, and it does. It works. It works. And no matter how much you research and you get the information and you realize that, no, the coronavirus, unless, unless you know, well, we can think very broadly about this. Could they be spraying things in particular areas and suddenly people are falling sick? And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Could people have these symptoms? And it's not related to uh, the COVID-19, but they're, they're simply diagnosing it as such, or the CDC is demanding they be diagnosed as such, because that has already happened, and we've heard from doctors who have said, no, my patients didn't die of the flu, but that's what the CDC has ordered, that we mark it down as a flu. Okay, so we know how unbelievably evil and corrupt are our institutions. Um, so for all the people who are freaking out that they're going to get this, and they're going to die or get really sick, I really suggest you not worry about that, but worry about what your government officials will do. 
Now, if we had people that could catch the obvious and it would beg questions in their mind, well, then we might be able to say, you know what, government official, go away. Go away. We don't want to listen to this. We will take care of ourselves. We don't need mommy and daddy, government official, to tell us what to do. But we don't have those people. So here, um, another perspective or more of a perspective. All suggest that COVID-19 is a relatively benign disease for most young people and a potentially devastating one for the old and chronically ill. Put that together. Old and chronically ill. Not old and or chronically ill, um, albeit not nearly as risky as reported. Given the low mortality rate among younger patients with coronavirus, zero in children 10 or younger among hun hundreds of cases in China, and 0 0.2, uh, between 0 0.2 and 0.4 percent in most healthy non-G8, G8, G8, G, wow, geatric, wow, something's wrong with me, but you know what I'm talking about, adults, elderly, all right, and this is still before accounting for what is likely to be a high number of undetected asymptomatic cases, and they recover fine. We need to divert our focus away from worrying about preventing systemic spread among healthy people which is likely either inevitable or out of our control and commit most, if not all of our resources toward protecting those truly at risk of developing critical illness and even death. Everyone over 70 and people who are already at higher risk from this kind of virus. Why are we freaking out, uh, canceling everything? Uh, telling people to work at home. Governments are willy-nilly making drastic decisions that profoundly affect the status of human freedom. That's what's behind this. Their decisions are going to affect our lives in profound ways, and there has thus far been no real debate on this. We're just letting them do whatever the hell they want to do. We have governments all too willing to deploy their awesome power to control human populations in direct response to mass public pressure based on fears that have so far not been justified by any available evidence. For this reason, we have every reason to be concerned. Are we really ready to imprison the world? Wreck financial markets? Well, the financial markets are wrecked. They're just using the coronavirus as an excuse. Um, it gives them plausible deniability. Uh, destroy countless jobs because that's already happening and massively disrupt life as we know it all to forestall some uncertain fate even as we do know the right way to deal with the problem from a medical point of view it's at least worth debating yeah so let me just go over some information because things are accelerating and the acceleration is towards tyranny. Anxiety grips companies across the world as virus spreads. CEO of a toy maker can't get uh, products from Chinese factories, um, preparing to lay off people. Hong Kong, where the palatial jumbo, jumbo kingdom restaurant is closed, businesses are struggling. The virus has grounded a British airline and it sunk a Japanese cruise ship company. Cumulative damage is mounting. Now, the warning that Japan and 19 European countries that share the Euro, uh, Euro currency are in danger of recession, well, a whole lot have been just, you know, uh, teetering towards recession for a long time. The global economy has been slow no, it's not been great. U.S. economy economy has just been artificially propped up. No, it's not great. All right. Um, so 
Already people are experiencing a financial hit from this. You know, all of the vendors, all of the businesses that look forward to that Southwest, South Southwest uh, conference, they're going to take an enormous hit. Market massacre, oil crashes 30%, Dow down 1,000, 1,000. Um, things are not looking good. Dow Jones futures plunge, crude oil futures crash, and rising COVID-19 cases. Um, yeah, it's, uh, this is where we're at, guys. This is 1929. Hedge fund bear warns of Great Depression style stock market crash. And I, I can't tell you how many articles just today, Sunday, well, because the stock market's open today, you know, in many countries, um, what is tomorrow going to look like? Are they bringing this crash to us? Well, the crash has been here. <laughs> But will they officially bring it on? You know what I mean. COVID-19 is the catalyst that is triggering a supply-side crisis, one that is further exacerbated by, by the um, simultaneous demand-side shock. And all of it deliberately orchestrated. This is the most frightening disease I've ever encountered in my career says architect of national pandemic strategy. You can listen to this guy, but I have no interest. The most frightening disease I've ever encountered and a whole lot of people, uh, most, and I'm going to say, I, I can't remember the percentage, but it could be as high as 95% recover fine. But that's not what they're going to report on 24-7. Not when they have an agenda. They have to freak people out. This, this is coming from an expert, will freak people out. Yeah. Uh, it's the most frightening disease I've ever encountered in my career. And that includes Ebola, MERS, SARS. Uh, it's frightening because of the combination of infectiousness and lethality. That appears to be many-fold higher than flu. The propaganda. They use it because it works. Ted Cruz to self-quarantine after contact with coronavirus patient because he went to that CPAC um, conference, and so did Trump, and so did Pence. And they're elderly, right? CDC, 60 and older, stay home. No face-to-face -face contact. And Trump, well, he's elderly, and he's out there. And the rallies continue. That doesn't even beg questions in people's minds. For some reason, I guess they just put these people like Trump and Pence in a whole different category than themselves. And that's unfortunate because then, well, these people are, for them, gods gods and they're protected but you can't have face-to-face -face contact anymore and if you show up at a family event like a wedding then you sit off to the side <laughs> that was in an article that i included yesterday after state of emergency cuomo hints at mass quarantines for new york um i'll just go through this quickly firefighters in new york won't be dispatched to potential coronavirus cases. Nope. They have been taken off that job. Really? Department issued an order Friday temporal, temporarily relieving firefighters from responding to calls of the second highest priority for patients with fever, coughing, difficulty breathing, or even those who are unconscious. Oh. Forget about them. 
Just walk away. <laughs> New York, New York. Federal agencies prepare for coronavirus disruptions, emergency plans to maintain essential services as the virus spreads. Well, I think it's way too soon to do this, but there's an agenda and it's proceeding very quickly. All right, federal agencies, well, uh, directing air traffic, delivering mail, making social security payments, those are essential services, but I guess everything else, forget about it. You know, they don't have to do anything. Um, the agency, uh, agencies are going to experience disruption. How Americans can see this as a legitimate way to contain the spread is beyond me, but hey, um, U.S. Postal Service activated its pandemic flu preparedness plan. Hmm, I wonder about that. I've got to look into that. I posted a video, I don't know, six, seven years ago about the U.S. Postal workers who... Uh, were trained to give vaccines, to show up at the door where they deliver mail with a law enforcement officer. This is in case of a pandemic to give a vaccine. And if you don't comply and obey, the law enforcement officer hauls you away. Um, coronavirus patients in Spain forced to stay in their homes by terror cops in hazmat suits. Unbelievable what is happening around the world. So this is Harrow, not sure if I've pronounced that correctly, 30 people infected with the bug, with the coronavirus. Um, and they were previously warned they face arrest and forced hospital, hospital quarantine if they failed to comply. And this is what they were faced with. Special Ops, Civil Guard Special Ops, from Rapid Action Group going door to door to notify infected residents they must stay inside their homes. And locals complained that they felt like they were you know, living in Chernobyl. Besides the threat of arrest and hospitalization, authorities say those who ignore the ban will be fined a whopping 500,000 euros. Measures are being ramped up after seven more people died from the disease. Still an extremely low number. Extremely low considering this, considering locking down residents and they're hit with jail or that kind of fine? Is this really, is this, uh, <laughs> well, we don't have the people <clears throat> that can put this together, you know, as very tyrannical. And whether healthy or sick, please don't lick. Washington State. Don't lick the envelopes that you put your ballots in for those votes. Are you kidding me? Well, there was an article, and I think I've, uh, I went through it, but I have not read all of what is contained in those articles. Um, I think it was the one where they were talking about federal disruptions coming, federal agency disruptions coming. Um, there's no evidence that the mail spreads coronavirus. So then I come upon this, whether healthy or sick, please don't lick, to contain the coronavirus. So are they going to come out tomorrow and say there's evidence that licking envelopes is spreading the coronavirus they could they could see what's frightening is everything is so unbelievably absurd northern italy quarantined 16 million people steps towards 
uh, just a deeper tyranny. Anyone living in L Lombardy and 14 of the central northern provinces will need special permission to travel. Milan, Venice, they announced the closure of schools, gyms, museums, nightclubs, venues across the country, uh, most radical steps outside of China, and the World Health Organization has praised Italy for it. Uh, the Army's chief of staff has the coronavirus. The health system is under immense strain. Um, they're treating people in hospital corridors. Where are the videos? I want to see the videos. All right, so here are the 14 provinces. Uh, there will be no movement in or out of these areas or within them. Unless for proven work-related reasons, emergencies or health reasons. No movement in or out. And within them? Is that why we saw that picture of no one on the streets in Harrow? Really? We are facing an emergency, a national emergency. We have to limit the spread of the virus and prevent our hospitals from being overwhelmed. And they're using someone who's very young. Wonder if she's a teenager. She's a Milan residence resident. And it's really important to be responsible in this moment. Oh boy. A malfunction causes red wine to flow from faucets and... <laughs> well, at least you have wine flowing, all right? We're not. Our water is just going to get more and more toxic. But at least you, guys in Italy, you can just sit back and drink wine and... <laughs> all right, man. Our world has turned into something so flippin'. Nuts. Social distancing is a new coronavirus buzz phrase. Does it work? Stay three feet apart. <clears throat> three feet apart. Here's a professor. He is, yeah, teaching to an empty classroom because, oh, online. Online. And once again, as coronavirus spreads, warnings become more urgent for the elderly and frail. Well, it really should read the frail elderly. Um, it's obvious that something's very wrong with this event that is taking place. It's unfortunate that we don't have people that can critically think. That means we all get to suffer the consequences. All right, I'll link below to everything. Um, it's, uh, look, again, with all of these events that are taking place at a real rapid speed now, the, each one will get, I think, more and more bizarre and obvious that uh, this is orchestrated, okay? And if it's orchestrated, then you got to think why, right? The agenda. Um, it's, it, the weather has become very obvious that it's controlled. So it's going to get harder to deal with for all of us because, you know, the obvious just seems to want to just go over everybody's heads. No, this is not anything that we have lived before. So, oh boy, let's just really try to support one another during this time instead of attack one another, you know, and demanding that someone uh, uh, believe what your truth is, but you, it's not your, it's not the truth. Um, 
yeah, there's, I guess, a want for a lot of people to believe that they have the truth, especially those who post on YouTube. Hey, I got it. I got it first here. You know, and they title their videos like, you know, the smoking gun and this is it and that. No, we don't know. We just don't know. But we do know. Mainstream media, it's a propaganda outlet for governments with an agenda. Ciao, guys.